Welcome back to Davokan Simba Room in Umbria. Um, following my last video, just talking about what currently is available in the Simba Room Foundry system, I did, thought I should actually just show a little bit of combat as well. I split this combat into three little demonstrations. Um, it's based on an encounter my, my group had as we're, they were coming from the Titans towards Indaros on this map. But um, the three levels I'm going to show you are the, the very basic. Uh, manual way of managing combat then i'm going to show you a little bit more automation that is now possible uh, with a little help from token action hud and the third one i'm giving a, sh a really short overview of um, the enhanced combat which is just starting to make its way into the simba room role system which is pretty cool as well um, I like the way it's going, but uh, you sh you'll see later. So I also realized that in the uh, the three the short videos, I must have used my webcam microphone rather than my proper microphone. So if it's a bit tinny, then uh, forgive that. Yeah. So thank you very much. Any comments? Any questions? Of course, if you want to say uh, how did you do this, or comments like you've done this wrong, uh, there's a much much better way of doing this, then please do let me know. Again, so to see whether I can actually explain a little bit more about how the um, combat works and encounter works in Simba Room on Foundry, I set up a little little uh, scene here. Um, I'm going to fumble my way through it because there's just lots of different ways different people um, manage the combat, and so far I've not really used any automation. I've um, been very very manual on this one. I'll show you the, the different steps and uh, probably need to cut this a couple of times to get everything set up. But the basic step base uh, is we have got our scene here. On the left is my GM view, on the right is the player's view. Um, so if you look at the GM view here I've got three actors. I've got Jokan, the Theurg, I've got Grieb the Goblin and Quarek. But Grieb is really my, my, my main guy at this uh, point. Um, and then on the other side we've got some robbers. So I've just got a domineering robber, a curvy robber, and a jaunty robber chief. All these um, adjectives come from token mode. So I didn't pick them, they were randomly picked. So blame token mode if you find them strange. So, um, how would I do this? Now, the way Simba Room works is that uh, when you attack, you roll your d20, modified, or whatever stats you use for your attack, modified by the defense modifier from the other person. It sounds terribly complicated, but it isn't actually that bad. So let's have a look. We've got Reap here, and ignore the uh, the Hati so far, I'm not going to use that right away. So we've got Reap here, and he's got, as you, if you look at the character sheet, um, he's got a dagger, he's got a parrying dagger and a bow, and he actually has also got um, a couple of other uh, taverns here, while well, my cat is making lots of noise over here on some scrap paper. Um, yeah, you sit in the dice tray, that's much better. So, um, if you look at the twin attack, for example, here, um, and he's got a twin attack on... Sorry, a twin attack's not what it was after. Faint is what it was after. If you look at Faint, um, he's got it on the first level, P, yeah? So it's a passive action. It says the character can choose to attack with discrete instead of accurate when they have a short or precise weapon. And this goblin, of course, has got that. He's got a dagger and he's got a parrying dagger. So together with twin attack and feint, he can actually attack twice in a round um, when he's close up. He's also got a bow, and the bow um, doesn't use discrete, which would be 15. He uses accurate to attack, which is 8. So that's a lot worse. Um, but depending on how you want to play this, basically, how automated you want to do this, this means you might have to modify it a little bit. On the other side, let's say he's going to go for the domineering robber, and I'll put them opposite each other here. Looking at his character sheet, we've got um, an accurate of 15, which is very high. He attacks with that, with his one-handed weapon. It doesn't even matter which one-handed weapon it is. It could be saw, it could be hammer, something like that. Um, and he, he defends, if you look at his defense, he's got an armor, and his defense stat is quick, which is 12. Uh, but it's lowered by the, the impeding armor here. I'm not quite sure the stats are right from that one, but for the, sense of, uh, for the illustration it will definitely work. So this is our guy here, that's the robber. So if I now want to be uh, the player, and I'm going to switch across to the right hand screen a little bit more, I've got these two people here in front of me, I say I'm going to target him, and at this point you could actually just say I'm going to target him. 
So as your friendly GM, I would then tell you, okay, his defense is 12, that means you get a minus 2. So you go into the character sheet, this is the most manual way. You pick the, uh, the weapon you want to pick, let's say I'm going to get right up close and personal. Actually no, let's use the bow. Um, and then your DM tells you minus 2, that's your defense modifier. Damage roll, it says 1d8, that's already taken from the character sheet. You can have favor, disfavor, and advantage. I'm not going to go into all that, but it does that all correctly. And then you press roll. You get that there, and then the chat pops up. What if we got failed by 5? So that's not very good. Let's assume nothing else happens. We'll just try that again, and you'll notice something about this goblin. He is terrible with a bow. So the player gets fed up with that. Um, he goes up close instead. And you can see I'm not using a real battle map here, I'm just using a, a nice backdrop picture by a German artist called Kasper David Friedrich, which is very moody. And yeah, so he's now up close. But let's assume that for whatever reason the domineering robber has really not done anything in the meantime. So he's again going to say, I'm going to attack this guy, but this time I'm going to use my dagger. Right, dagger. Click on here, still get minus two. Roll. And you'll see, oh yeah, finally, automatically, the D4, uh, sorry, the D6 damage has rolled along with it. I've now cost 4 damage, and as the GM, I then go into my Dominion Grubber, you can right-click on the um, on the token, go to the bottom, enter minus 4, and he's now got 4 fewer points. Of course, I forgot that he's got 2 um, armor, yeah, protection of 2 and armor, that's not displayed anywhere, not automated anywhere, so I have to actually remember that and say plus 2 again. So he's now at 13 points, I think it is. Oh, 11, okay. So, that would be the most manual way of attacking. Most manual way of defending would then be, okay, I as the GM say, oh sorry, on screen, <laughs> confusing myself. He's got an attack value of um, 15, so that gives you minus five for your defense. That means our Goblin Grieb needs to go in, goes to defense, which you, you do by clicking the armor. Modifier of minus 5. Roll. So this is a fail, I'm pretty sure. Then the armor gets rolled along. You can see protection is 2. You roll 2 on that. The damage of this attack, if I don't know, I have to look it up again. That's a bit tedious at points. Was 4. So I now have to tell the player Grieb here. Minus 2, please, on your hit points. That's stage 1. I didn't do that right, did I? Oh, yes, I did. Right. Um, the next stage along that you can use is by actually targeting properly and using um, the the automated uh, modifiers. So, what I can show you here is basically if I target, uh, grief targets this guy. I'm just sure that's correct. So, go to target click on him, you see these nice little chevrons around it, I can see that as well, and he's now saying I'm targeting this guy and I want to attack him. Okay, I'm also jumping one ahead and I'm using my little token hut up here, you can see this, this is relatively freshly implemented, these are basically the action buttons for this player. So if I wanted to say, no I don't want that one, um, I want to use my dagger now, I can just hover over here, go to weapons dagger, and I will automatically do this. You see that there's a drop down here now. So it's a test versus some stat. I just say against defense and I can say I'm getting minus two and I roll. So I didn't have to tell, <laughs> of course, getting a failure. Um, I didn't have to tell the player. Yeah, I didn't have to say, oh, um, he has got minus two or whatever. That was pulled out automatically. The player can manage this a lot better themselves. Now he wants to defend against the Dominion Robber. What am I going to do? I'm going to go to Armor, to Witch Girl, against his Accurate. Yeah, I don't need an extra. That one can go. That was me messing about earlier with manual. I roll, and I see, oh, okay, succeeded. But it pulled automatically. You can see that on the chat card here. Defense 14. Tested against the accurate of, um, of minus five bone, uh, modifier because the other guy is really accurate, and that gives you your result. That's that's the next stage along. Um, yeah, if I wanted to do that from the GM side, I could then just say, right, how did you know that this guy is targeting you? 
well, I agree if I targeted him, but if I on my side target, um, no, I have to tell them that. I have to. Never mind that last bit. So that's the first bit. Next bit to follow. <coughs> 